Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Parr, and on this episode of Math Up to Parr, we are going to be talking about probability, and we're going to be talking about the words that we use to represent probability. So let's talk about what probability is. So probability is the chance of an event occurring. So what's the chance something will happen? That's what probability is, and it actually involves mathematical thinking. So we're going to use some words to represent um, the chances of an event occurring, okay? If something is definitely positively going to happen, meaning nothing is going to stand in the way, we can use the word certain to describe that situation, okay? If something is probably going to happen, it's not for sure, but it's probably going to happen, there's a chance that I, but most likely it will, we're going to use the word likely, okay? If something has an even chance of happening, like there's an equal chance something happens and there's an equal chance that something else happens, that is going to be called equally likely, okay? I'm going to put equally likely over here. So equally likely means there's an even chance of something happening, okay? If something is probably not going to happen means it might, but probably not, that is going to be unlikely. You'll notice that likely and unlikely, we just take the word likely and we put the prefix un in front of it, which makes it so it's not likely, okay? Something is definitely positively, without a doubt, ain't no way, not gonna happen, no way, no how, that is impossible. Okay, impossible is definitely not gonna happen. No matter what, it's not gonna happen. Okay, so these are the words that we're gonna use. Okay, if, cer if we're talking about something that's certain, that's a 100% chance it's gonna happen, no matter what, it's happening, okay? If it's impossible, it's a 0% chance that it's going to happen, okay? All of these things come in between, okay? And so they represent an amount in between. All of these things are possible, okay? There's possible, well, certain is included in the possible, but there's possible and there's impossible. Impossible means not going to happen. Possible means it, it, it could happen. Now, it could be certain that it's going to happen. It could be likely. It could be equally likely or it could be unlikely. So possible is a big range of amounts. So let's talk about some statements and let's see if we can use those five words that we just used on our previous slide, certain, impossible, likely, unlikely, and equally likely to represent these situations, okay? It is blank that the sun will rise tomorrow. Well, if you've learned in science, the earth rotates on its axis every 24 hours. It always has, and as far as we know, it's going to. So that is actually certain, okay? It is certain that the sun will rise tomorrow. You may not see it because it might be cloudy or you might not be outside to watch it happen, but it is certain that it's going to rise. Whether you see it or not, it happens, and it's been happening for a long time, okay? It is currently blank for a human to survive on the planet Venus. Currently, with our technology, it is impossible for a human to survive on the planet Venus. The atmosphere is just way too thick, and it is way too hot, and somebody could not safely survive on the planet Venus, okay? It is blank that a baby will cry if they are hungry. Well, I have a baby at home, and I know that she, if she's hungry, she's not just sitting there peacefully with a smile on her face. She is upset. And so if she is hungry, it is likely that she is going to cry. So I'm going to put the word likely right here, okay? It's also likely that a baby cries even when they're not hungry. I don't know if you've ever been around a baby, but it's likely they cry. 
All right, number four, it is blank that it will snow in Florida during the month of December. Well, December is a winter month for the Northern Hemisphere, but the state of Florida is pretty far south, which means it's closer to the equator, and so it has much warmer temperatures. If you've ever looked at Florida weather, they don't get very much snow at all, if ever. They probably have gotten snow, okay? Um, but you would have to look at some weather records, and it was probably from a long time ago, which means it's not impossible for them to get snow. It's possible, but it's very, very unlikely. So this is a situation where we would use the word unlikely, meaning it could happen, but it would be a big surprise if it did. All right? A coin has a blank chance of landing on heads or tails. Well, when you look at a coin... One side is head, one side is tails. There's an even amount, one heads, one tail. So when you flip a coin, a lot of times they do this in sports games or to make a decision, they do it because it's an equal chance of choosing one or the other, okay? So it's a pretty fair way to pick. It's gonna land on one, but there's not one chance more than the other. So this is where we would use the word equally likely to describe the chance of a coin landing on heads or of it landing on tails, okay? So these are some situations where we would use these words. All right, let's talk about um, this scenario. So this box uh, represents different colored marbles in a bag, okay? So we're gonna use this information to label the statements over here using probability terms. So instead of situations that happen in life, like we just did on this slide, we're going to use marbles. Well, let's count up our marbles first. I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I know that I have 12 total marbles, okay? Uh, let me write this in green. I have 12 total marbles, okay? I have four red. I have three green, I have four blue, and I have one yellow, okay? So all of that adds up to 12 total, but this is just a way for me to show my work for a probability problem so that I can make sure I've counted correctly, everything lines up, and it's um, an easier way for me to understand the numbers that I'm looking at, okay? So this statement says it is blank, pick a yellow marble out of the bag without looking. Well, a yellow marble is there, but if I were to reach in this bag and just grab one out without look, looking, I would probably pick one of these. It's possible that I pick this one yellow one, but it's very unlikely. So it is unlikely that I would pick out that yellow marble. Doesn't mean it's impossible because it's there, but it would be surprising if I did. Okay, it is blank to pick a red marble or a blue marble without looking. So if I'm just taking the red or the blue, okay, I'm not talking about the other ones. Is there more of a chance I pick red or more of a chance I pick blue? Well, I have four red and I have four blue. There's an even amount of both. So that means that there is an equally likely chance of picking red or blue. All right, number three, it is blank to pick a red marble than a green marble without looking. So if I look at red, I have four, and if I look at green, I have three. So there's more red than green, not a whole lot more, but there are more. So it would be more likely to pick a red marble than a green. Not by a lot, but it would be more likely than if I were to pick green over red, okay? Number four says it is blank that you would pick a red or green marble from the bag without looking, okay? So if I have red and green and I combine them together, there are seven of them, okay? Compared to the rest, there's only five left. So there's more of a chance that I would pick a red or green than there is than I would pick a blue or yellow. So I would once again use more likely to describe 
this, it'd be more likely that I'd pick red or green than blue or yellow. And then last one, it is blank to pick a purple marble from the bag without looking. There are no purple marbles here. So that is going to be impossible. If something doesn't exist, it's impossible to pick it, okay? So there's no chance I'm picking out a purple marble. So that's how we use these statements to apply to um, a bag of marbles, okay? You might also see problems that involve rolling a dice, okay? There are a lot of different dice out there. Um, this one is a traditional sided dice. It has the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six on it, okay? Um, and when I roll it, I have an equally likely chance of getting any one of those, okay? Um, I have, you know, an equally likely chance of landing on an even number or landing on an odd number, okay? Uh, it's impossible to land on the number seven, okay? It's certain that I'll land on a number one through six. Um, it's more likely that I would land on the number four or five than it is that I would land on the number two um, if I'm combining four and five together. So you'll see dice sometimes in probability problems, so these can be used to represent, and you can use words to represent those. This is a spinner. You'll also see um, different kinds of spinners in probability problems. This one has equal sized parts. So it's divided into four equal sized pieces. So we've got green, red, orange, and purple. When I spin it, you don't know which one it's gonna land on. Okay, this time it was purple. Um, but a lot of times when you're dealing with probability, if you spin something enough times, it'll even out if they're equal sized pieces but you can use sometimes like half of it would be purple and the other sides would be smaller. So each time it can be a little bit different depending on um, the spinner, but spinners are used for probability problems. And this is um, a big picture of a deck of cards. So decks of cards can be used for probability problems a lot. Um, each suit, um, which is the different pattern on each card. Um, each one of those has 13 cards. It has an ace, which is like the number one, and it goes through 10, and then it has a jack, a queen, and a king. So it has that for each suit. And so if there's 13 of this, 13 of this, um, 13 of this, 13 of this, it adds up to 52 cards. Um, and then if you add in jokers, it could be more. Um, but decks of cards are also commonly used for probability problems, so you'll probably see those. All right, guys, that is all I have for you on probability using words. Be sure to check out my other videos on probabilities being represented as fractions, using number lines, and creating your own probability problems. Thanks for listening, and happy practicing.